All right, hello YouTube. Here we go. Executive order, state of Georgia. A food supply emergency. Let's let's let let's roll to the beautiful bean footage here. If we can get this to start. I know how to do it. Um, we're going to cover that in a second, but of course, as soon as I go to film, that's that, that's when it's going to act up. You know what I mean? Come on. Maybe ah, I know what I'm doing. See, it is running, but it's caught on that. No. Try this. Try this. Okay, this is her intro. I won't be zooming in. I'm really close here. Uh, gives me a second to say, hey, YouTube in the world. I'm going to cover a couple of different uh, areas here. Uh, all, of course, in the here her logo presentation of revelations coverage in that vein i bring you these other producers targeting supply chain crisis here on the state of georgia government website it says the global supply chain including within the state of georgia has been detrimentally impacted by the outbreak of zombies. We're just going to call it zombie outbreak. Okay. Despite the state successful mitigation of the public health impacts of the zombies, Georgia's supply chain is yet to fully recover. The zombies. Whereas supply chain disruptions negatively impacted Georgia's economy and the social and economic well-being of its residents and... The governor is vested with the emergency powers cited herein as the chief executive of this state. He talks about price gouging and therefore is now prohibited. This would include motor fuel and diesel fuel. Federal rules and regulations. This is going to come worldwide. That operators of commercial vehicles. It will be in your neighborhood. Suspended. To ensure Eventually. supply chain for all supplies, goods, and services throughout Georgia. We are going. The suspension will remain in effect for 30 days or until the emergency conditions cease to exist. So it sounds like they're lifting how many hours big rig drivers, truck drivers can uh, be on the roads. But it does say no motor carrier operating under the terms of this state of emergency will require or allow an ill or fatigued driver to operate a motor vehicle. A driver who notifies a motor vehicle carrier okay. that he needs immediate rest will be given at least 10 consecutive hours off duty. Right, uh, see if we can before requiring to jump over here. Oh. Wages world. We'll get to that. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, see, I'm trying to move on this page. Is, I'm just going to let it play for a second. Now, play, darn you. We'll call that. There we go. Finally. China and show you all the vessels that are not moving. And it is thousands upon thousands of them. Of 
commercials too. Hey, you know what? Why not make this show interesting? We'll keep breaking it up. Have no rhythm to it, no organization. Why not? <laughs> Love you, YouTube. Look at that. Look at that. Those are the ships with the things that we will not be getting well, in the future. Shanghai. And if you go up this river, you can make it bigger. Look at them all. Yeah, like and subscribe, Mary Greeley News. And she is straight up news these days. Yeah. Other people who track food. We are one growing season away from a complete global food breakdown. And they're ensuring that's going to happen. Take about two weeks to so learn to grow some food. And deliver the goods here to the United States. Different analysis are saying that we're going to start seeing our shelves actually pretty darn bare by June. Here we have the west coast of the United States. I really don't see that many ships, let alone um, I don't really see anything really being bottlenecked at any of the ports. But there isn't really a lot coming in. Let's go all the way down to uh, Los Angeles. See, there's only a few there in the port of Los Angeles. Nothing compared to what's going on um, there in China. This is Long Beach. Here we have the Gulf of Mexico. Not bad. All right, she's going to go on about that They're for a while. that for food. Um, that if the fighting over there across the pond isn't finished and planting begins this year, that's going to Which affect the global this season. meltdown for food. Much of the food that comes out of that one area, uh, their ports have been destroyed or blocked, and this is affecting... <sighs> Um, not just areas where they ship the grain to, sunflower and wheat, but also the Middle East and Africa, and it's kind of like a... And that's the thing. effect, yeah. Here in the U.S., it's been a problem getting fertilizer. But evidently, Canada provides 83% of potash, which they also get nitrogen from for the farmers. All right, we're not going to steal her whole show. For the full show, watch Mary Greeley News. Um... Over here on Wages World, though, where I teased you a couple of times already, let's go ahead and fire this up. If I can do this. Okay, naturally. Okay, gotta give him credit. This is this is the episode. I ain't trying to steal anybody's information. I'm trying to organize it into my own uh, statements. Yeah, this is all. This is all right now. Today, in the last couple of hours, these have been released. What I'm showing you. The Georgia state of emergency. Yeah, you know, you guys, if you watch Wages World, you know how it is. And that's what I'm doing, echoing the professionals, organizing it into a statement of what I believe is uh, the state of the world today. Yeah, that's a better way to put it. Oh. No, he does not. Okay. So, uh, 
This is about an X2 flare. It's hitting Earth. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Not great Wait. Okay. The man. Not the myth. The man. legend. Hey, Judith, what's up? What's this going to be? Hey, what's happening, CW? Courtesy. Um, uh, hey, Babylon. Catchphrase hey, courtesy of Rex hey, Mayer. I don't look for a whole lot of people here. Leak anyway, project. Uh, I don't know. Maybe some will straggle in, but who knows? So, yeah, guys, look. Yeah, get over there check it out. Okay. China, uh, India, right over here. These are radio blackout conditions. Now it's so early on that they're not gonna, we're not gonna see any reports yet, probably. Okay. Um, but I wanna, I wanna drag this back, and I want you guys to see the progression here. Okay. There's the first M flare. Right. That one right there. Okay. Oh. And there's, here's the one I just showed you guys earlier, right there. So, essentially the same area, a little bit further west for the X flare. Okay? So, that is what's going on with that. That's a, uh, that's just an X-ray absorption, or D region absorption. Uh, I'm not going to get into details on all that right now. But, uh, obviously, with X flares, that's what you're going to get. I guess... I want to say this because this is something that needs said. This X player came in at an X2, right? This thing was stronger than that. And let me show you why. I just want to refresh this because uh, it was I was just getting ready to go in the other room and do my thing, you know what I'm saying? And I seen this and I was like, oh man. <laughs> I need to go back on here real quick. Yeah, and I am not going to steal his whole show again. It's Wages World, YouTube. Over here, we got Mr. MBB333, and he is going to talk to us about the Earth could see a large earthquake in the next 96 hours. Guys, hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. I wanted to touch base on the earthquake watch that we're right in the middle of in this video. I mentioned it a couple of days ago. We're in the middle of an earthquake watch, April 16th through April 23rd. That's based off of observations that I've made over the years with regard to several things, and I wanted to share those things with you in this video. You're looking at the, the current position of the planets right now, April 19th, 2022. Here's the Earth. We've got Mars, Venus, Saturn. Neptune and Jupiter, and you can see based off of the position of the planets, three gas giants, three solids, forms a nice triangle, right? Well, we've got the sun over here, too, which is the main component of all of these equations whenever it comes to planetary position and earthquakes. The sun right now is very active. That's yeah. That's a big contributing factor to the possibility of a large earthquake. He discusses that for a while. Rogue buoy over Rogue buoy over here. Okay. Activity on the Earth, especially earthquake activity. Believe it or not, as the full moon came into effect, there was a rogue buoy over here in the Bay of Bengal, on the east side of the Bay of Bengal, that went into event mode. You can see April 17th. It went into event mode again on April the 19th, showing signs of a tsunami. It detected something over there in that location. And this buoy is still in event mode right now as i do this video was it an earthquake no there were no earthquakes and this is an up-to-date video so i'm posting this immediately after filming it right now is a mystery we did see a couple of earthquakes over you haven't seen my shows you know they're pretty impromptu off the coast of the philippines coming in at 19 kilometers deep and the 6.1 magnitude earthquake was surrounded by a series of four 
and five strength aftershock. And all these earthquakes, I believe, are symptomatic of the uh, astronomical events occurring due to the central wave uh, from the sun and other events and alignments all prophesized not only in the Bible but other uh, prophecies such as Nostradamus and um, Edgar Cayce and so on and so forth. Jocks off the coast of the Philippines creating a small swarm. Coming over here to the western United States you can see a lot of small earthquake activity forming what looks like a large oval on the map over here in the western United States. Zooming in a little closer, you can see a pattern near Yellowstone Supervolcano. Look at the earthquakes here on the west side of the caldera forming what looks like a long arc. See the earthquakes right there? And then there's two over here just north of Yellowstone Lake, not far from the Hempkin Lake region where there was a 7.2 magnitude earthquake back in 1959. So there's a lot of activity going on. Could be related to the, the planetary position. The planets are going to be like this for the next few days. Venus being a conductor, Mars being a conductor. The gas giants are the, the strongest All this based on the uh, electric Obviously the strongest slash holographic the universe sun. models. So a large earthquake here in the coming days, especially around April He's going from the electromagnetic universe model, I believe, which is could the be, modern. I would say appear in the illusions of Alaska. Model. And if a large earthquake does materialize here in the next few days, hopefully it's in a remote part of the Earth where nobody is impacted by the large quake. Want to take a quick look at what's going on with the Schumann resonance and the sun. You can see a, a little spike in activity over here at the Schumann that lasted about eight hours. Looking at the planetary K index, for the most part, pretty quiet. Right now as I do this video, but I look for that to change here in the coming days. As you can see a strong uptick in solar activity that is now becoming earth directed you can see the sunspot complex just got bigger as you can see now a fourth sunspot is visible on the northeastern limb of the sun rotating Way over there the earth. in the corner right now as i do this video Way as i mentioned there. earlier there was just another m class solar flare this m class solar flare peaked out at 2050 universal time Looking at the ionosphere D region, it reacted almost instantly. You can see a, a big spike in the ionosphere D region at 2050 universal time. So more than likely, this one has a Earth-directed CME that, depending on how fast it's going, will be here relatively soon, within the next 48 hours. These are also contributing factors to earthquakes on Earth. You have the, the lunar cycle, the, the full moon phase that, like I said, we just came out of. We have a big increase in solar activity. You can see a strong uptick, a steady uptick in the last 72 hours. And now we have Earth-directed solar flares and CMEs. That compounded with the planetary position, the unique triangulation between yeah, like that. the gas giants. <laughs> And three solids, and the Earth being influenced by a uh, full moon. This so guy is the man. Are this, definitely favorable uh, for a large earthquake here in the coming days. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Again, the pivotal day being April 23rd of 2022. Also in this video, I've got a brand new picture slideshow, new sky phenomenon photos sent in from all around the world. Going to North Carolina, okay. beautiful. Hey, for the rest of the show, go check it out. And um, Mr. MBB333, it is his current li latest episode. Uh, could the Earth see a larger, large earthquake in the next 96 hours? Let's look. And it's been, I've been Matthew Barrett. Thank you. Have a good night, good day, good evening, whatever the case may be, whenever you see this. Matt out.